everyone. Welcome to our new Chan program entitled Grow Inward, Blossom Outward, Women Professionals at Linda Liu and Partners. In this series, we are going to interview outstanding females in our firm, sharing their growing stories and the lessons they learned throughout this journey. In our first episode, we are lucky to have the opportunity to interview Nancy Soon. I have looked up to Nancy and seen her as my mentor. In her professional bios, she's introduced the like, Nancy is a partner at Linda Liu and Partners Beijing office. Nancy focuses on strategic patent procurement and has extensive experience in patent prosecution before the China National Intellectual Property Administration, United States Patent and Trademark Office, and other major jurisdictions. Nancy also passed the U.S. Patent Bar in July 2018, and she has been a Chinese patent attorney since 2010. She always tries to go the extra mile for her clients. In my eyes, Nancy is a trophy child with perfect academic performance, an excellent patent attorney with remarkable professional skills, and a great supervisor who is generous in sharing her experience, knowledge, and advice with the utmost sincerity and patience. Hi, Nancy. Great pleasure to have you here today. Without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, could you please briefly introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Um, so I joined the patent practice right after my graduation from Tsinghua University, mm -hmm. electrical engineering major. Um, and I actually started as a patent in-house counsel in a semiconductor design company mm -hmm. globally, uh, which is quite unique as compared with some of my other patent peers, because people usually started from private practice. Mm -hmm. um, I took that as a privilege because starting from a commercial company, I was able to get a real sense how the patents could be applied to the real business competitions against your competitors. You could actually feel that it's a tangible asset. You can enforce them in, um, you know, to secure your commercial success, um, rather than they are just pieces of papers hanging on the wall. Um, so after three years as a patent in-house counsel, I joined our Linda Lin Partners. In the beginning, I was majorly uh, involved in the Japanese client service. I worked for some of the largest consumer electronics company in the world from Japan um, for about four years or so. And then Linda started to ask me to switch a little bit and travel more often to Europe and the U.S. to serve our uh, Western clients. Thank you. Nancy, you are one of the youngest partners in the firm. What do you think is the rarest trait in you? Or what makes you, Nancy? Um, well, I think if you ask me which characteristics I'm fond of myself, I would say curiosity. Um, I'm the kind of person who is always very curious about the people around me, especially people from different countries, cultures, um, working in different technologies. And of course, I'm constantly fascinated by the technological innovations. Mm -hmm. Mm, I think working in our profession, curiosity is one of the must you should have. Um, because, you know, um, right now in the world, as the technology evolves, you always see some interdisciplinary innovations in the intersection, for instance, um, between biology, life science, and also electronics. So I have met people who feel really bad about this um, intersectional um, innovations because, oh, I'm a double E major, mm. I don't know a word in biology, and if you ask me to be involved in such interdisciplinary um, subjects, oh, that's too difficult. I would take a lot of time to finish them. But for me, I would take those innovations as my blessings um, because... You know, it's like magic. Uh, you have the inherent characteristics from the very different faraway subjects. And um, by the innovators, you're able to combine the best parts, the best merits of both subjects and contribute to people's health and well-beings all over the world. It's fascinating. Um, there's a saying from uh, George Bernard Shaw, which is, some people make things happen, some people watch things happen, while the others are wondering what has happened. I think uh, as a patent professional, 
we are a part of this innovation process. We help people who make things happen,、mm -hmm. and we help these people succeed. So it's a、uh, we have a great sense of accomplishment、uh, in our daily job. Thank you. Curiosity indeed is a kind of intrinsic motive for people to create and learn new things. At the same time, staying curious is also a way to keep young. So my third question is. You went to Santa Clara Law School in the United States in 2018 for your LLM studies. So, what do you think this、um, overseas study life has brought to you?、Um, well, I spent one year in Santa Clara Law, and I think the biggest change to me would be my、um, way of thinking or mindset.、Um, in Santa Clara, I was. Very proactively involved in the local communities on activities. For instance, we have many IP seminars hosted by local bar associations, our law school, and various、uh, law firms in the Bay Area. I found that in this community, there is always a way to figure out、um, cooperation、uh, between different entities, which benefits every side of you know each subject. I haven't seen any zero sum game in the Bay Area, to be frank. For instance, there is a very popular、uh, mentorship program、uh, prevalent in the Bay Area. You could have a mentor who is senior in your university, in your law school, and they can give you some suggestions on how to improve your grades in school. And you, as a law student. You could apply to some mentorship program hosted by the local Asian American Bar Association, and they can designate you a senior attorney or even a partner、mm -hmm. who has really、um, extensive experience in this patent profession to guide you.、Um, if you if you are a new joiner or newcomer,、um, how to adapt really quickly into the law firm's life, or if you are already pretty senior for me, I already had ten year experience as a patent professional. So, how to further your career path、um, according to their own experiences?、Um, so, people might ask. So, as mentors, they must spare a lot of time to、uh, give suggestions and talk and chat, have coffees with these younger、um, generations. How could this program also benefit them? But I would say this is a genuine win-win situation、um, because, for instance, as a law firm, you always need to hire new talents every year. So、um, the、uh, mentoring the younger students in the law schools, you would have an opportunity to locate some of the best talents、mm -hmm. um, in these younger generations and foster a, a very good working relationship or even private relationships with them. So when you are expanding your firm's business in the future, you would have some really good friends or students who love to support you. So in my law school,、um, there is a professor who impacted me a great deal.、Um, I remember her so well. That's Professor Galloway. So Galloway is an off counsel of a very large U.S. law firm, and she's also a mother of four boys. <laughs> yeah,、uh, that's fascinating. And she has taught us a lot,、um, not only the law's knowledge, but also the skills we need in our life and work. For instance, she once mentioned. Um, if there are some really controversial issues, and it's like you are debating with some of your colleagues or companions,、um, you can switch your body postures. For instance, instead of facing each other like we are doing right now, you may turn aside, and so all of you can face the same direction toward a whiteboard, for instance, and you can draw what you are thinking about, what are the difficult points in this question, all on the same whiteboard. And because your body posture is facing the same direction, you would be reminded mentally or subconsciously that you are facing, you are tackling the same problem, and your enemy is the problem itself, rather than your companion. So your purpose is not to argue over your companion or defeat him or her, but to defeat the problem itself. So、um, from this、uh, experience, I actually shared this story with.、Um, Senior patent counsel of Walmart in one of the local community's IP events. I told her what I learned from Professor Galloway, and she was so amazed. She asked, "So, in what kind of class can you be taught such kind of you know、uh, interesting skills or, or insights or mindsets?"、Um, and that's really impressive. Wow, that's amazing. 
Um, so speaking of traveling abroad、um, or studying abroad, I think this give me some really good insights about.、Um, although we have a very large、um, Earth, um, very large world, there is always something we could share among people from different countries and cultures. So in addition to studying in the U.S. for one year, I also traveled quite often to、um, go sightseeing with my friends and families. I remember、um, one story. So when I was still quite young, I traveled、uh, to Canada together with my friends, and of course, the Niagara Falls is a must-see、mm. spot.、Um, at that time, I was young and adventurous, and a little bit careless as well. So when we、um, Left the hotel that day. I thought that、um, I shouldn't take my passport together with me because there could be a thief stealing my passport away.、Um, and then we went to、uh, we took a train and to visit the Niagara Falls.、Um, actually, it's、um, right on the border between the Canada and the U.S. After、uh, visiting the falls, I also took a road trip,、uh, walking a little bit around. And I saw a bridge lying on the river, and on the bridge, there were just a few、uh, large red letters being painted, like graffiti's,、uh, which seems to show that this is the border river between Canada and the U.S. But I didn't take that seriously, because、uh, it didn't match my impression. Like in China, if it's really a border. You should have a border control. You should have several policemen standing very solemnly there in uniform and give you warnings. Oh, here is a border. Do not cross here. But it wasn't the case、uh, over there. I was adventurous, so I thought about crossing that bridge and to see the other side. <laughs>、uh, so I、uh, crossed that bridge and entered the other side with no block anyway, together with my friends. But after I landed on the other side of that bridge. One officer suddenly showed up and stopped me. <laughs> I could tell from the uniform that、um, he is a member of the U.S. Customs Control.、Uh, yeah, and I was a little bit frightened because he seemed very angry about my behavior, and he took me to a special inspection room, which was very crowded. I could tell that、um, there were a lot of people who were trying to cross that border illegally and were stopped by them、um, for further inspections. Of course, the first question the officer asked me is that, "Please show me your passport."、Mm. And I told him that I, <laughs> I put that in my hotel、uh-huh. and didn't bring that with me, but I actually crossed the border already. <laughs> well,、um, the good thing is that I do have、uh, the ten-year、uh, visa, multiple entry、uh, in both、uh, Canada and the U.S. And I showed him my photo copy in my cell phone、uh, and also the visa numbers. I was sure that. He was able to locate my valid visa number information from his IT system, but he constantly、um, inquired me with multiple questions. So, what is your intention to visit here? Uh, so, uh, why uh, did you, you know, why did you not bring your passport with you? Blah blah blah.、Um, I feel like I was treated like a criminal, someone with, you know, evil intentions. Ah.、Uh, At last,、uh, he actually checked my cameras and iPad, and found found one of the photos I took、uh, on my train trip to the falls.、Uh, that was a trip I took、um, when I saw a very old couple、um, sitting on the train、um, very quietly, and the lady was actually sleeping, and she was leaning on the husband's shoulders, and very quietly the husband was reading newspapers. So that sin gave me a sense of real peace, and I was thinking that. So if I turn older and I am able to have my husband in companion in our eighties, still being together with each other, leaning on each other's shoulders, and go sightseeing for some really good, you know, sceneries in the world, that would be such a good thing. So I took a photo、um, of the old couple, but the officer didn't know my intention. He thought probably he thought so. Were you going to do some really evil things against those two old couples? So he asked. So why did you take this photo? I told him very honestly. I didn't think much before I took that photo. I told him, you know, my my line of thinking, and I could tell right away. His face turned from very furious. 
quickly into, you know, peaceful or even with a little bit of smile or grin. Um, despite that, he has been asking me inquiries for about 10 minutes already. Very unfriendly. He directly told me, you're free to go now, with a smile on his face. I was very surprised because I thought about, oh, without a passport, you cross the border, maybe I would be kept in that small black inspector room for a whole day or so. But after heard my response to that intention, he just let me go right away. So my friends waiting very anxiously outside that inspector room were also surprised. Oh, how come you were released in such a short period of time? So when I uh, reflected on that memory, I could tell that uh, maybe in the officer's mind, he was also thinking about the power of love. So he could sense, I value peace, I value the power of love. As the old saying goes in China, I love you, I would like to turn older together with you, slowly and slowly until our 80s. So this power of love also touched him, so he believed he is convinced that I shouldn't be a bad person <laughs> trying to do something evil against the U.S. citizens or the U.S. as a country. Um, yeah, the power of love is shared um, among different countries. And um, another story I could think of, which is a, a bit exotic, also a bit adventurous, that happened in Vienna, mm -hmm. Austria. So uh, one summer I, I took my um, whole family together to go sightseeing in Indiana. Not only my husband and I, but also my um, parents and also parents-in-law. I was under great pressure uh, during that whole trip because only my husband and my dad speak a little English and all the other family members do not speak a word. <laughs> so I was in charge of mm -hmm. taking care of the, the whole team and making sure that they are all safe. And then uh, when we were um, go sightseeing in the city center of Vienna, we uh, met a group of gypsy girls suddenly, surrounded mm -hmm. us. And they were holding a bunch of uh, plastic flowers in their hand and trying to sell those flowers to us at a very high price. And I was super nervous because I um, learned from some travel logs that if you were surrounded by some gypsy girls, they were trying to, you know, take a large amount of money from you by selling those flowers. Not only that, they might try to steal your purse out of your pocket and maybe even attack you because you have many more people uh, than you. So my first reaction is, oh, get away, just leave, a, leave us alone. But they didn't take my words seriously, they got even closer. Um, and one of the leading gypsy girls even tried to attack me because um, he was, she was trying to use her nails to hit me. Um, in that situation, I tried to calm down. I thought probably I could approach that in a different way. Um, I told the leading gypsy girl that, Oh, that was only a joke. I love you and I hope today you can have a very nice day. With a smile on my face. And then suddenly, the gypsy girl stopped for a while and looked around and told her friends, this lady is our friend. We can just leave them here. Let's go to some other places. And said bye-bye to me. So we are all safe, the whole family. I didn't expect them um, to leave so quickly, but I think from their point of view, they are kind of like a marginalized group in Europe. Maybe um, what they are used to is the other people are being disrespectful to them. And suddenly um, she met one person who greeted her and said, I hope you can have a very lovely day today. Maybe she feel, you know, just not like doing something harmful or, you know, doing something bad against us. Um, so despite the different cultures, despite where you are in the world, I think it's, it always helps if we trust the power of love. Like we daily spend our life with our clients or our family members or you know people from somewhere across the ocean. It always happens and it's always something true. Wow, these two stories are very touching. 
We may have different gender, different colors, different history, but love is what we all believe in. Here comes my fourth question. When you decided to pursue your LLM study at Santa Clara Law School, some partners were worried that you might resign from the firm when you came back, but you did not do so. Now you have been working at Lindelo and Partners for 12 years. So what makes you stay here? I bet there must be something here that you love very much. Yeah, sure. I really love our firm. Um, especially, I cherish our working atmosphere. Um, it's not a very con transactional relationship between our colleagues and bosses. To me, it's more like a family. Mm. You know, uh, when I first joined the firm back in the year 2011, so every morning I um, enter the office, I would be greeted by our colleagues. People are always saying hello, so good morning to you in the corridors, and of course I responded. So every morning you would be reminded that you are an integral part of that firm. Um, and gradually after staying for a few months, I started to really feel that um, I have a group of colleagues who really care about each other, not only themselves. So in China, it's a bit different from the U.S. Because in the U.S., people um, always have the so-called billing hours each year an attorney needs to accomplish. So otherwise, their bonus would be impacted in a lot, great deal. But here in China, we don't have such a fixed um, billing hours requirement. So basically, you, if you do more work, you earn more. So we have certain peak seasons in the years where everyone is extremely busy. And for me, as a new joiner, I was still trying to learn from the others, and it might take me longer times to uh, finish certain tasks. And I have my colleagues, um, Chris and other people, who are always willing to volunteer and give me a hand. For instance, um, I could realize that they are already very busy. For instance, I need to work overtime until 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, but still, he would ask, so Nancy, do you need a hand right now? Um, probably if you are too tired or stressful, I can help you to also finish this case. I um, very much appreciate that um, he would need to work even longer, maybe until 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. But he's still willing to consider the others and trying to, you know, like we're in a, in a team, he hopes every one of us is healthy and trying to average the workload and make sure that everyone is in their well-being without you know, being burned out or too much exhausted. I have various working experience and I do know that it's not um, in every um, you know, firms or in every companies that you would have colleagues who not only care about their own business but also care about you well, well, well-being. Um, this is a special. I don't think in many US firms I could uh, have the same kind of environment. So when I was studying in the U.S., people always asked me, also, are you going to stay in the U.S.? Like, they are very used to this situation because people try to get a uh, LLM degree, law degree, in the U.S. and then trying to find a job in a local U.S. law firm and immigrate to the U.S. And my answer is that no. Because one of my original intentions to uh, go to the U.S. to pursue my study is that I feel our firm is doing a great job uh, we are not very well known in the U.S. So my job is to immerse myself in the U.S. local community for a year and try to make our firm better known to the local IT community. That's my objective. And I try to share my experience, what I learned, what I felt about our firm, also uh, was the U.S. Uh, local IT community. Um, so that's the first point. And the second point I really love about our firm is we give abundant opportunities for the uh, younger generations to develop and grow. So there is a, um, one example in our department. Um, I think she joined the firm very early in the year 2008. As a liberal arts major, she majored in Japanese languages. Um, and she worked really diligently. Uh, so after about five years or so, she can already um, do the, the patent translation job from Japanese to Chinese and vice versa uh, in a very um, high level. So um, she, of course, as a person, she always, you know, is trying to um, have a better uh, understanding of the patent profession, uh, although she comes out of a liberal arts major. 
So very cautiously, she raised a request to our department head on um, whether she could um, try to become a patent attorney here in our firm. And everyone was pretty surprised because uh, she learned only Japanese language in universities. Um, but um, after a conversation between our department head and that lady, they reached an agreement that she could try to, to do this. She started to be the um, first post in our patent attorney's work. Of course, there would be several patent attorneys reviewing her work. And they feel that this lady is doing a great job, um, maybe not as good as some of the uh, scientific or uh, some of the engineering major graduates, uh, but the work quality is almost parallel. Um, so we offered her some suggestions. So why not um, trying to pursue another degree in scientific and engineering? And she did so. So she is right now trying to get a, a graduate certificate in the engineering major. Uh, and after uh, three years working as um, substantially doing those jobs as a patent attorney, um, she decided to further pursue, um, you know, her um, horizon. And probably um, after her she, her graduation as a scientific uh, major, she would be also involved in responding to office actions, which is one of the more challenging part of our daily job. Um, our department head also agreed, out of her surprise, um, because even some patent attorneys uh, with a scientific background like a um, master's degree, and after three or four years um, being a patent attorney, they still cannot respond to office actions very properly, to analyze the examiner's opinion uh, in a logical fashion, and give our recommendations on how to address the examiner's concerns. So this lady is very courageous. At the same time, our department has, is also very courageous to agree <laughs> with her request. Um, and the good thing is that that lady was very much encouraged by receiving constant permissions from our department head to explore new opportunities. Um, and this year, in our annual selection of the best OA responses cases, that lady was able to submit one case as a candidate case. And I was very impressed because she right now can not only write an analysis and recommendations to the clients, she was also actively involved in face-to-face -face on internet conferences with Japanese clients. So that's basically what an excellent patent attorney is able to do. Um, so I asked her secret, so how could you develop so much of her potential and reach such a high level? from a, um, you know, a language major, and right now today, you are almost like a, um, a good um, patent attorney with a, uh, the recent graduation certificate in an engineering background. And she told me she believed the single truth is that our firm has given her so many opportunities, leave so many opportunities open for her to further explore. Otherwise, even if she has an intention to further develop she would receive a constant no, and she would be discouraged. So she, she actually, I, I feel very lucky that our firm has her. At the same time, she feels she's super lucky to be a part of our firm, to get constant permissions to grow. And that reminds me of what Mr. Wei and Linda always reminds us. So in our firm, um, it's not a privilege for you to receive uh, foreign clients or important clients. Like in some of the other, um, Chinese law firms, it's always the partner's job to receive the visitors from the foreign countries. And in our firm, we always form a group. You can have senior partners together with um, those not very experienced attorneys. Maybe they only have five years working experience in the patent field. You can still be a, a part of the team receiving the foreign guests where you can pick up your confidence, build up your skill, and being nurtured in our very harmonized um, atmosphere and constantly grow. So I think out of this fashion, our firm, we are able to keep many of the talents uh, to grow together in our firm. Some of the very junior ones are right now already partners of the firm. I really love this. I feel the same way. Everyone is contributing and benefiting from this healthy and positive working atmosphere. We feel comfortable and have the sense of belonging here. So my fifth question is, 
We know you take care of the client relationship development work of our US and European clients. So what's your biggest impression in this kind of work? Um, I think there's a um, old Chinese saying, um, being, be a good person before you can do things really well. Um, I think that's very true. So looking back at my uh, past 10 years working with our foreign clients, I'm very grateful to one of my uh, biggest sponsors and also friends, Peter. And Peter is also Linda's uh, mentor when she was in the U.S. many years ago. So people sometimes would ask me, how did I develop such kind of uh, sponsorship relationship and become a really good friend of Peter? I didn't really know the answer, so I reflected a lot. So back to 10 years ago, our firm once um, hosted a very um, large IP seminar, international seminar in Guangzhou, and we invited Peter as a speaker. So we had a trip to Guangzhou for four days, and during the whole trip, I was Peter's uh, company. I translated um, all his speeches, and also we uh, visited several local companies. I was accompanying him. And during the whole trip, he was traveling with his wife. Um, I think our friendship mostly started right after that trip. So what happened during that trip, I couldn't get it very clearly. I think that's a bit mysterious. But if I recall, the only thing I could remember pretty well is that um, one day when we were waiting at the gate, um, of one of the client's re reception desk, and we were contacting them to receive us, to enter that gate. It was very windy, and the wife of Peter was not feeling well, so she was trembling. So I noticed that I stepped um, towards her, and I grabbed her hand in my hand, and I turned sideways to try to block some wind uh, from her. So that's a very small gesture, and I think every one of us would be able to do that, and would do that at that moment. But probably it's just that very small gesture of friendship, and being kind, um, touch them somehow. So right after that, ship, that trip, uh, Peter told me, told Linda, that she highly uh, recognized my ability, and also cherished me as one of his best friends here in China. During those 10 years, he has been supporting me so much. Even during my application to a U.S. law school, he wrote me letters of recommendations which helped me to um, obtain scholarships from those law schools. I think if you are um, being really genuine to show your real self to the clients, and the clients could see, could sense that you are a kind person, um, you really try to understand the others, and you... Um, care about the other's feelings, you could care about the work quality, you could care about whether your work um, has actually helped them in their daily job. So they would be not reluctant to understand more about you and develop a relationship with you. Wow, this is a very warm story and thank you for sharing your thoughts in this aspect. My sixth question. It is difficult to manage a client relationship, but in fact, it is even more difficult to manage a team. I once heard from a former colleague who has left her firm that he was taught her patiently how to do regarding a test that she wrote. Although she was not your apprentice, she felt very touched because not all people are so meticulous and patient to point out problems in other people's work product. Nancy, you are also training apprentice. So what do you think about the training new people? I do feel that um, each post uh, or each person in our work is super important because our firm works in a teamwork fashion. And even if there is only one forty link in the whole process, our commitment to the client couldn't be completely fulfilled. In particular, as in the past years, I was um, involved in the business development process I feel that there is a heavier responsibility in me to make sure that our commitments to the clients are all true. Um, so from the perspectives on how to um, try to train the younger employees to improve to a higher level, 
I would often recall my own experience in the university when I was a senior. Um, I often had some academic issues I didn't fully understand and tried to consult with and discuss with my boyfriend, um, right now my husband. And my, um, the reply I received from him is always like, isn't that obvious? And I was like crushed. So I could fully understand that feeling of being crushed. I believe that this shouldn't be the way we train the younger people. Um, so I try to be really patient when I'm reviewing uh, the younger or junior attorney's work. Um, so first of all, I always highlight some of the good points they have in their work product. Um, and together with the good points, also give them some suggestions on how to further improve on certain points. So in this way, uh, I feel that they, um, it's easier for them to accept my suggestions. Yeah, I can tell that you are trying your best to protect our feelings when pointing out our mistakes. I feel very blessed to have such a considerate supervisor like you. And my seventh question, how do you feel about being a woman practitioner in China? What are you doing to help others develop? Um, I think as a woman uh, IP practitioners in China, we are doing a great job. I know many of our peers who are uh, firm founders, they are all women, they are all mothers, um, but still they are able to balance their uh, work and life quite well. Um, for me, I think um, our, as a woman and as a mom, we do have a heavier burden taking care of the kids um, in the perspective of family responsibilities. In particular, uh, recently we have a good news that our maternity leave has been extended from four months to six months, um, paid leave. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, this is a good thing for moms to take care of the smaller kids. Um, but as a firm, as an employer, uh, that means we have um, stronger responsibility to prepare ourselves for a longer extended leave. For instance, for the extended two months, of course, you need to have another professional who are able to take up the work to fill in the spot. Um, in my daily work, especially in our department, we have many young moms with two or even three mm -hmm. kids. Um, so I fully understand their concerns because I myself is also a mom. Um, we need to take care of our, our kids when they are very young. Mm -hmm. You cannot leave them because they are just simply not able to fulfill some complicated daily tasks. But as they grow older, they would have stronger egos and they wouldn't listen to every word you you tell them. So in each phase of the child's development, the mom always have a you know a strong responsibility and must spare much time uh, rather than other other family members like daddies um, usually. Um, so how to help them, um, you know, make sure they have enough time spending together with their kids, at the same time doing really well in their daily work. What I'm doing is try to um, give them more detailed guidance when I uh, review their work. For instance, I tend to summarize um, the issues I frequently see in their work product and try to give some bullet points to make myself clearer um, try to help them understand what I'm saying. Um, it's like, you know, for many students right now, uh, they would, um, after school, taking, um, you know, out of curriculum training classes to try to score higher, you know, in school. So I'm trying to spare more time for the, these working moms, um, like extracurricular classes, to give them specific and additional guidance. Um, so hopefully they can grasp the idea more quickly um, in a limited time span. Um, this is helpful for all of us. Um, our child, they are nurturing us. Our work is nurturing us. And of course, uh, daily we have a lot of chores to face. We have a lot of pressures. But I hope from being patient, um, from being empathetic to all these uh, working moms in our firm, uh, we can happily grow together. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this reminds me of the slogan that is very popular on the internet, uh, which is girls have girls. 
and in our case, moms help moms. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So my last question, Nancy, you are also a mom now. How do you balance your family and life? From a top student to a strong career woman in the new era, then to balance family life. Is there anything you want to share with us? What do you enjoy doing in your spare time and helps balance work? Um, sure. So I know so many great working moms. Um, I think I'm not even close to them. But I'm always very willing to ask for advice from them and I would not um, you know, miss any opportunities to learn from them. Um, I remember, um, you know, I mentioned my professor Galloway in Santa Clara Law School. Um, she shared a lot of good experience with us. Um, she has four sons and she's super busy being a guest professor in Santa Clara Law and also Stanford Law School. So she said it's very important to plan ahead, to try to plan ahead. For instance, if your um, one of her sons has a soccer game and she has another very important meetings and she would miss the soccer game, she would immediately uh, tell her son about that and would offer several other alternatives. Other activities maybe in the following two weeks and she can participate together with her son to make up for it. So this is a good plan ahead. And another point I learned is uh, also from one of the uh, Chinese American patent attorneys I know, is to uh, make every family member aware of the important schedules of the others. So during the pandemic, everyone is working from home remotely. So in their family, they would have a large whiteboard and the mom and dad would all write their important schedules on that whiteboard. Uh, for instance, um, at this time slot, daddy would have an important Zoom call and at the other time slot, maybe mommy would have some important um, deadline cases um, need to, uh, you know, without being disturbed anyway. So from this uh, fashion, um, everyone would have a certain expectations of what's going on in the family. And this helps the others to um, try to adjust their time, their plan to facilitate the other family members work. For instance, you are busy right now, so I can help you with the kids care. And in another sl uh, slot, we can switch over. And for the kids, they also need a sense of safety and security. And from this um, pre-forecasted schedule, they would have more certainty on uh, at which time slot my parents would be doing this is this thing and the other thing. So they could anticipate uh, which hour is for them as family hours. So they wouldn't feel isolated or insecure. I think this is a great way, even if right now many of us are already working from the uh, physical office, it's still good to make every family member aware of important occasions and events and try to allocate um, the house tours and taking care of the kids and your work as well. Um, Work-life balance, I think in many sense it's not a balance, it's a, more like a trade-off. So you always need to be aware of what are your current top priorities and what are some of the things that can be selectively abandoned temporarily. Um, for my own experience, I had a lot of lessons learned <laughs> during the first two and a half years uh, of my boy. Um, yeah, I'd like to share this lesson with you. <laughs> So I, I once uh, heard from another working mom in Europe, um, of course she is Chinese, um, she founded her own firm, also quite successful, and I know that um, she has her young kids uh, living in China together with grandparents, so uh, they are physically apart for eight months or even longer every year. So I asked her, how were you able to handle this separation from your kids for such a long time? And she told me, so Nancy, don't worry too much. You are his mom, and I know, everyone know, he knows you are his mom, and you are always his mom. The fact wouldn't change, so don't worry too much. So looking back, I think probably she is very a uh, optimistic person, and she tends to overlook some of the very challenging moments in her own experience. But to me, I really <laughs> suffered quite a bit. Um, from, you know, I, I took everything I heard from her for granted. 
I thought, oh, I'm your mom, I'm always your mom. So I, I could just bravely, bluntly uh, doing something, working overtime in the office until 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening. And I ran back to my home and tried to play together with my kids. Ah, oh, you are always my son, I'm always your mom, that's not a big deal. That's what I thought. But <laughs> after my son turned one and a half years old, I could sense that um, he had a stronger sense of ego. Um, if, when I get back home really late, I try to make up for some of the family time together with him, I'd like to, to hug him more, to tell more stories with him. He is already very angry at me. He is pissed off. He said, so when I was looking for you, mom, where were you? And he had a great sense of uncertainty and also unsafe feelings in his heart because he thought mom would arrive at home much earlier, uh, but I worked overtime very frequently. And he was disappointed and angry. So when I tried to hug him together, accompany him um, more often, after I arrived back home, he would reject what I did. So if I approached him, he would even cry out. So uh, I felt really bad in, 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 in those days. Um, I felt guilty and I didn't know what I did wrong. But the lesson learned is that although I'm always his mom, he really needs those physical touch. He really needs every day, several hours spared just for him to be um, his company. So right now what I'm trying to do is um, no matter how busy I am, I would arrive at home uh, before 7 o'clock in the evening and to take at least two hours um, to be physically together with my son to share um, his experience in the kindergarten. Um, I could feel that uh, in the recent days uh, he started to be more acceptable to, to his mom, to, to my friendly gesture. <laughs> oh, that's So basically I had some failures. Um, but in the future, um, I think as we both grow up, um, I would try to also incorporate his schedule together with mine. For instance, there are some activities we might be able to do together um, outdoors. For instance, we can run together for exercises. Uh, and when he is doing his homework at, at home, um, I would have some quiet time to sit alongside with him and read more books and to do my own study. Um, there are a lot of future variables and I think um, as a family um, to be each other's companion is also quite important and there is a way um, in trade-off that we can find um, that everyone could fulfill their self themselves. Wow, this is a very important tip. Thank you for sharing these stories about your son and personal life, which helps to show a more dimensional Nancy not only a professional patent attorney, but also a new mom who is learning how to parenting a two-year-old boy. Thank you, well, thank you again for taking time to accept this interview. Hopefully, our audiences, including foreign clients, would know more about Nancy and the more outstanding females in Lina Liu and Partners. So see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.